get the ball to your offense and let your offense do their thing. All right, let's hear what Nick, Nick Sirianni has to say from Chicago. Came out today, uh, pass happy, wasn't a ton of running in the first half. Was that just how the game presented itself, or was that something you saw coming into the week? Yeah, I mean, a little bit, a little bit of both. You go in there and you think you have some matchups that you like, and I mean, at the end of the day, AJ had 170 yards and Davante had 126, so we saw some matchups that we liked out there. Um, and so, you know, I think that's. It's just how we went out today, and uh, you know, and wasn't our best game as we know. A lot of credit to them. I know that that team. Uh, that's a really well coached team. It's a really well coached team. That the team preaches uh, takeaways um, and protecting the football, just like we do. I, I mean, I've been with him for for three years. Coach Eberflus is a great coach, and, uh, and and you know, they got the better of us in that uh, in the takeaway margin today. Yeah, obviously you're gonna go out and, and, and watch it, and I'll have some better insight on that. But um, again, give them a lot of credit for the things that they did to, you know, make it hard for us on offense. Uh, I thought the defense played lights out. Um, I do think Justin Fields is special. Um, he's a special. He's got some special abilities. Um, you know, I know our quarterback's special as well. Um, and, but you know, give Justin Fields a lot of a lot of love right there because. He, you see him live, you see it on tape, and you see how good he is, and then you see it in see it up to, uh, close and personal, and he's he's special. He's gonna, and that's good for the NFL that uh, two young quarterbacks going at it today um, that are gonna be you know good quarterbacks in the NFL for a while. Um, obviously, turnovers, you know that's the, that's the big thing. We'll we'll look at them. I, I, you know, I got an idea what happened on the, on the three of them, um, but I'll look at them and, and make sure I, I uh, you know we'll get the coaching points right to to make sure we move on and get better. Did you see from Jalen today? Yeah, uh, the weather. The weather. It was. It was cold out there, and it, and it was windy off and on. Um, but you know, he he struggled a little. I mean, that, that early throw that got him a pick. That he, he just doesn't have a lot of interceptions. So I would say that play was a. They were knocking on the door back there. I would say that play is a was a struggle for him. But he just really bounced back and had a, you know, threw the ball well, um, in tough conditions. And and you and you have to be able to do that. As we continue on, right? Um, as we continue on, and you play games in the cold, like, I mean, that that's a necessity. And it was good to see our guys winning, you know, and and uh, Jalen making some really good throws in there to, you know, end the game out. Uh, you know, and we we had that uh, third down there, and we had a lot of confidence that Jalen and AJ were going to make a play there, uh, and they did in the end of the game with with the ball in our hands. When it, when it comes to his mindset, Jalen's mindset, like like you said, he had a couple bad plays early, but. The fact that he perseveres through that and is still, you know, puts it aside, makes big plays in the second half. What's that say about? Him? I think he just controls what he can control. He can't control the, a bad play earlier. He moves on to the next play, and, and it's it's just. It's no surprise. That's what, who this guy is, and we've seen that over and over again. Like, and I've mentioned it a thousand times. Like the the New Orleans play, he has that stone face look on his face from a couple from last year in the New Orleans play, and then he, he makes a he makes a bad play, and he and he still has that same look. It doesn't matter. Like he's can, he continually to put himself in the in the moment and and learn from the past. Um, and try to repeat the good things and, and not, uh, you know, and get better from the things he messed up. Um, but he's completely in the moment, and I think that's what great players do. What about, what about rebounding from all the chips he took? I'm sorry? What about rebounding from all the Rebounding? Chips? Yeah, and did we even it all with the number of um, you know, they forced us to pull a couple balls, and, and that doesn't mean you you uh, you can't run just regular inside zone and or not read it on the backside. But yeah, he he'll be sore from that. He'll be sore from that. We'll be on a short week, uh, but um, he's tough, and he he uh, you know he took the one. Uh, you guys too think like there's some plays that happen, and when you get hit like one one that got he got hit on by that linebacker is a great hit. But sometimes when they're square up like that, those don't you know those aren't the ones that that hurt you. Um, and and you know and so you know I know he took a couple big hits, but uh, you know it, it's I, they weren't the they were they were pretty clean shots. I'm just he got up and he was he was good to go. And he let, hey, let's go again. Nice follow up to that. Why was it more quarterback centric in the running game? Yeah, I mean that's our that was part of part of our game plan against the defense that we were we were looking at. It's not necessarily quarterback centric. It's you're reading things on the backside, and sometimes, you know, just like Fields pulled some too. Like they had a, I think if you looked at it, they had a lot more called quarterback runs, but then they had some zone reads that they were they were reading some guys, uh, reading the guy that they were supposed to read, and then he get so some of it was like that. Uh, you know, I would, I, and then a couple of the. Um, Called runs where we felt like we felt pretty safe with those, and they and they ended up being pretty safe ones. Uh, the way we looked at it. How close was Dallas uh, to going today, and 
why did you ultimately decide? Yeah, he's, he's getting there. He's getting there. Um, uh, we'll, we'll see, obviously. Um, um, but he had a good week of practice and the things that he did, and uh, we felt like it, it, he wasn't quite ready yet. And uh, when he's ready, he'll go. Nick, were you guys more aware folks? that the Dallas Cowboys lost before we came out here? And if so, and I kind of know what your answer is, but if so, what are you thinking we found out when we got into the locker room. We, you know, we won. We were. Uh, I went to my office to think about what I was going to say to the team, and then uh, actually Bob and I and Kevin Petula were in my office, and it came up the, the play um, uh, with the interception. And so, um, hey, we, we're all we're thinking about is how we're going to make these corrections this week, and we're on a short week, so today is like Monday. Um, so we'll be working um, to fix the corrections from this game, and then get going on Dallas, who we have familiarity with, and they have familiarity with us. We know it's a really good football team. Um, I, I got a lot of respect for how well coached they are at all fronts, offense coordinator, defense coordinator, head coach. And I got a lot of respect for those players that they have over there. So we're going to have to be, we're going to have to have our best week of preparation to make sure we're ready to go one and know this week. Did you have a little smile on your face, maybe? I mean, come on, you have to have some emotion. Well, sure, I don't ever root for any of the NFC teams to, to win, right? And so how, how do, who do I root for tonight with the, uh, with the Giants in Washington? Maybe I'll root for another tie. Uh -huh. first one. Was that the call? Or did he read the blitz? Um, yeah, I don't want to answer that. Oh. How did the Sorry. Sorry, the old conditions down there, how did that affect the game plan overall? The That's the first time I ever did that to you. I know you were like, caught you a little off guard because usually I got a lot of good answers for you, all right? So remember all those good answers I've given you in the past. Uh, no, I told you, I'm not to tell you. <laughs> field how did that factor into the game plan and the fourth down decisions yeah um obviously obviously the 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 kicking situations are a little bit tougher there so you you take everything into account um you take every new account as far as you know all, you know when you're going to go for it on fourth down all those different things if the fourth down we went for it was the same fourth down essentially um, that we went for last week in, in New York. So um, it changes it a little bit because obviously uh, the weather changes a little bit. And, uh, you know, our, our, com our communication with, with um, Jake and uh, Rick and, and Brett were, were good. And, um, you know, we did the things that we thought we needed to do to, uh, you know, make sure we put them in a good position to make kicks. All right. Thanks, folks. All right. Coach said it's going to be a short week leading up to Saturday in Dallas. We got some fans in the Facebook comments for our Ask Ike segment. Let's see what they got. All right, Ike, all, of all the trends we've seen from this team during the regular season, which one will be most important mm. to continue in the postseason? That's a good one. Yeah, winning. <laughs> <laughs> Simple God, answer. Yeah, yeah, that's a great trend. <laughs> no, in, all, in all seriousness, uh, it's, it's a little odd for me to say it after today's game. But taking care of the football is the thing they've done really well this year on the offensive side of the ball. In order to win in, in January, man, you have to take care of the football. So I like to see them get back to being able to do that. Um, not careless with the ball, but being able to be smart with the football. And creating those turnovers on defense. I think that's the other big yeah. thing, too. When you see the teams that go far in the playoffs, those teams that are opportunistic on that side of the football create those big plays, that typically tends to lead to playoff success. Yeah. And hopefully as you keep kind of – getting some of those safeties back like C.J. Gardner-Johnson, who was responsible for so many of those takeaways earlier on in the season. That will also kind of get the defense going in that way, too. Yeah, getting guys back will be big for this team. You know, Coach just finished talking about Dallas Goddard being close to being ready to go. And when he is ready to go, he'll obviously play. But getting guys like Dallas Goddard back, C.J. Gardner-Johnson, I mean, these are Pro Bowl potential players that the Eagles don't have on offense and on defense. So getting guys healthy, being at full strength going into the playoffs, I mean, this Eagles team, especially when they get a chance to clinch home field advantage, I don't want to put the cart before the horse, but if they're able to do that, man, it's going to be hard to come to Philadelphia and get a win. Can I say one thing real quick? We're talking about C.J. Gardner-Johnson, the safety position. How about Kevin Wallace today? Oh, yeah. Man. Awesome. He really, really showed up. It felt like we were saying number 42's name uh, a number often here in this one. Coming downhill, there were a couple plays where he filled the run against David Montgomery. He had some nice sticks against Justin Fields, forced Fields to uh, bump a run out of bounds and, and uh, off to along the sideline. Showed up a number of times today. I think we have the NFC East standings for us. Let's take a look. We should be see good. What, see what we're dealing with here. All right. So there's the yeah, Eagles at the good. top, 13 and one. The Cowboys move to 10 and four. And Commanders and Giants, they're going to duke it out tonight on Sunday Night Football with the same record. Now they just saw each other not that long ago, so that's actually an interesting one to watch in the NFC East. But like you said, the Eagles are 
they control their own destiny in terms of what the playoffs are going to look like for them. Yeah, and they know this as well. They they know that they are in the driver's seat, and it's it's a um, tricky position to be in with three, four games left to go because subconsciously you don't want to start.